Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes and no. I, I, I do not have a cat. Uh, I, I have a dog. Uh, I have a Weimariner, and uh, her name is Siva, and she's such a great friend and creature. I, I love dogs, uh, but, but I love cats too. I just don't happen to have one. Um, I did not like Spot. Uh, <laughs> I, I did not like, Sp I, personally, Spot was f fantastic, sweet, beautiful cat, terrible actor. Uh, <laughs> Seriously, maybe the worst actor I've ever worked with. Uh, and they wrote things for Spot to do that this cat could not possibly do. And just to irritate me. Um, and uh, so people, I don't know, I get this, uh, I have this reputation that I hated this cat or I hate cats. or It's so untrue. I don't know how these things start. I mean, really, I, I, I love cats. I just did a, a PSA, a public service thing. I, I don't know if you've seen it yet. I haven't, but uh, apparently they're introducing legislation here in the state of New York to prohibit uh, removing claws from cats. And uh, why, where they ever got the idea that would be a good thing to do is let's tear their claws out so they don't mess up our furniture. You know, it's like with dogs. I don't understand dogs that they cut their tails off. You know, really? Is that necessary? I, so anyway, I did this PSA sort of thing where I, I said, uh, you know, basically, if you don't like the way nature delivered these animals, maybe you shouldn't have one. And um, yeah, don't you think? Uh, and, and, which is why I don't have a cat. Uh, no, 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 it's not. It's not. I, I love them, and I, I want them to stay whole and happy. And uh, if I had one, I know I'd adore it. But I, I am more of a dog person. Yeah. Anyone else? Is there a? Yeah, we're back here. Oh, we're back there. Hi. Thank you for being here, Brent. Pleasure. Uh, I wanted to ask you: um, Was there a particular favorite that you liked working with out of uh, oh, the cast? You mean? Yeah, the, the cast. cast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know what, I really, we loved, uh, I loved everybody. We really got on very, I mean, we, without, uh, Dorn I didn't care for, but uh, <laughs> the rest of them were just wonderful, and uh, we all got on very well, and I'm only joking about that. Michael is probably the nicest of all of us, um, except me, of course, but he is, he is a really nice guy. No, 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 we're all still very close friends. Uh, I see them all the time. I had lunch with LeVar last weekend. I, I see Dorn all the time. I talk to Patrick a lot. Uh, I did uh, uh, another episode of Blunt Talk with Patrick this season, and uh, which is a hilarious show, isn't it? I mean, have you seen Blunt Talk on Stars? How funny is Patrick on that show? He's just great. And uh, so I did another episode as Phil, the pl piano player, and. Um, uh, I'm hoping next season to be uh, Blunt Talk and Phil, uh, the piano player. Anyway, we'll see. Hey. Hi, thank you for being here today. Yeah. I have two questions. First one is, what was the intention of B4 and with the death of Data, the premise behind it or the continuation of Next Gen if they did it in another movie? Yeah. And the second one is, was there any aspect of Data you disliked playing? Why do I get the impression you already know the answers to all of this? I the answers. Uh, That's what here for you. Oh, okay. Um, uh, what was the purpose of before? Well, before was a, he was just in the movie. I mean, it was part of the plot. You know, it was, uh, and and it allowed us to have a failsafe. If, uh, but that wasn't the only failsafe, by the way. We had a couple of other ideas. Had we come back for another movie? Obviously, Data had downloaded all of his memories into B4, and B4 was going to evolve gradually and then become Data. But um, I, I think it could have gone in all kinds of directions, actually. It didn't have to be like that. Uh, what, what? I just want to know, did you, did you ask to have Data die in the script, or was it an idea they came to you and said, we're going to make him die? Or Yes, it was my idea. Oh, it was. Yeah. Okay. No, it really was actually. I, I was. I wrote this. Uh, I wrote the story with uh, a tremendous writer named John Logan. He's probably the number one screenwriter in the world today, and uh, he co-wrote Nemesis. We co-wrote the story with Rick Berman, and um, 
John, by the way, John Logan, he wrote uh, Hugo, he wrote uh, Gladiator, he wrote The Aviator, he wrote, uh, I mean, he's working right now, he just, he just finished the new Alien that's getting made. Uh, he completely created and wrote every word of the series Penny Dreadful that's on Showtime. I mean, he's just one of the great writers. And um, so one day we were talking and I said, you know, I think this is the last movie we're going to make, uh, this cast. And they pretty much told us, this is it for you guys. So we thought, well, let's, let's uh, end it with, you know, some kind of real emotional payoff for the audience who's been on this journey all this time. And uh, we got to end it, we got to let Dana go because... We know he's not coming back for another one. We were pretty sure. And I was really sure that I was probably not coming back because I was too old. And, um, uh, and people didn't really love it that we killed Dana. Uh, in general, I got a lot of uh, uh, hate mail is the word, yes. <laughs> um, but I'll tell you what, uh, what you probably don't know is that you were, as you were leaving the theater that night, Behind you on the screen, the Enterprise blew up and killed everybody else. <laughs> because you've never seen anyone else either. Who cares? If, at least you got closure with Data. You got nothing with the other characters. They're floating out in space somewhere. You don't even know what happened to them. I know what happened to them, but I'm not going to tell you. Now, what was the second part of that? Oh, um, is there more than one of you here? <laughs> <laughs> that was clone. I mean, you're wearing the same thing. It's uh, as far as Starfleet, they were uh, different ships, though. Um, don't I know it? Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, uh, was there an aspect of data I didn't like? Uh, the contacts. I, I, I wish I didn't have to wear the makeup. You know, I said to Gene Roddenberry, we did all these makeup tests at the beginning, and they were, uh, I, I was every color under the rainbow in these makeup tests. And we put them all on a reel, and we took them into Gene to show him, and the first one that came up, he went, okay, that's good. And I went, what? why did I have to go through all of this? And, but then I said to him, look, Gene, don't you think? What was that? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. Yeah, but it was behind me. <laughs> no. uh, it, I said, "Don't you think, Gene, that I could play this character without makeup? I could be convincing as an android. Don't you think by the 20th century they would have figured out how to make an android that had skin like a human and you know, blah blah." And his answer was, what makes you think what you have isn't better than skin? That's why you're Gene Roddenberry. <laughs> so I did it. And, uh, but I didn't love wearing that makeup, because I was the first one in every morning, and I was the last one to leave every night. Because it took just as long to get it off as it, got, it took to get it on. So that, that would be my only regret. Everything else was great. Are you still over there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, thanks for the autograph, by the way. Hey, man. Hey. hey. Well, anyway, my question is, what was it like wearing that makeup every single damn day? <laughs> uh, I, I, what is it like... <laughs> What is it like to not listen when a person speaks? <laughs> uh, what was it like wearing the makeup like every single day? <laughs> All right. uh, 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 you know what? I, I'll go there. What the heck? You know? It, you know, I didn't love it. I, uh, it took just as long to get off as it took to put on. And, and I had to wear it 16 hours a day. And I would say that would be the only thing I didn't like about the character. Uh, the Probably. Um, <laughs> but great question. Thank you, man. <laughs> Anyone else want to know about the makeup? Uh, yeah. Wait, 10 minutes. That's, that's 10 minutes is what that means. But 10 minutes is a long time. Okay. You can see because he's already bored and leaving. And then, oh no! You're, thank you. You as well. Uh, yeah.
I, I was curious. I, I would say of most of the characters, you probably had the most extensive dialogue as far as with the scientific terminology. Yes. And when you played people like uh, Lore or uh, Dr. Soon, or even, a, even in A Fistful of Datas, which I think was one of your best episodes. Thank you. You got a chance to really expand on that. Yeah. It wasn't just one scientific thing yet. How'd you feel about that? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, I agree. I mean, uh, my stomach used to turn over when I'd see what I had to say the next day. Uh, seriously, I'd be working. We would, did 16-hour days, uh, and that doesn't include the makeup. That's from the minute you start shooting till the end of shooting. And uh, so I had to put makeup on and take it off. I don't know if you've heard about that yet, but uh, I... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I <laughs> that was an unforgettable moment. But, uh, but, uh, uh, but then I would go home and uh, I'd have to take a shower to get the rest of everything off that didn't come off. And uh, I generally would order a Domino's pizza <laughs> and uh, get in the shower. And by the time I got out, the, the doorbell was ringing. And I'd open the script and look at it and, and really almost faint to look at what I had to say the next day because it was they weren't words that you normally say and uh, so I had this deal with myself that I had to be able to say it all at least one time perfectly or I couldn't go to sleep and because uh, if I could do it one time then I knew that by morning I could I could you know, the next day I'd be able to do it. And uh, and I also learned very early on that you had to do it out loud. Uh, seriously, because if you did it in your head, you thought you knew it. We had a lot of guest stars, really good actors, who would come on and they'd start to do it and then they'd stumble. And um, they'd, they always said the same thing. I knew it last night. And I'd say, yeah, but did you do it out loud last night? And, uh, and then there was Dorn, who didn't have all that much. I never got it right. Never. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the outtakes from the show, but we used to be on the bridge because uh, he was on the back of it. And you could see it on Patrick's face. You could see it on Jonathan's face. We're all just waiting for it. Because in seven years, he never delivered a first take, ever. Uh, Captain, the motor's <laughs> We knew it was coming. There was just no way. And, uh, but, uh, but that was really difficult. It, 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 I got better at it. You know, memory is, I mean, the, the memory is a muscle, and it, it, you do get better at it. And I could do it pretty well as time went on. But we had guest stars like, uh-oh, oh, Mandrake the Magician's leaving. <laughs> so long, Mandrake. Uh, we had, uh, uh, we had some really great guest stars, but we had uh, Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac did the show. And uh, Mick actually shaved, he's a great guy by the way, but he actually shaved a beard he'd had for 40 years, I think, just to play a, a fish on our, our show. He had the head of a fish. He played seafood on our show and, and shaved his beard for that. But he had one word, to do, he beamed in and the word was food. And he couldn't remember it. And uh, that, that's not that difficult, really, uh, food. You, you, anyone here could probably do it. But Mick was, uh, he was tense. He wanted to deliver. And he would beam in, and they would go, and he would go, I'm sorry, what was the word? Uh, and it, you know, food, Mick. Oh, yeah, food. Uh, Let's do it again. Uh, finally, they had to bring a card in that said food on it. <laughs> And even then, he could hardly do it. It was, no, but, but yeah, the, the dialogue was, was difficult. Did you like working with Denise Crosby? Did I like working with Denise Crosby? You had a relationship with Denise Crosby. Well, I, I mean, oh. Data had a relationship, but she was, she was actually married. Uh, so, you know, when those doors closed, well, I don't want to, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I just saw Denise. We were just in Seattle together at uh, the, a museum there, the... Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 what's that guy's name? Uh, 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 Paul Allen's museum. The, it's a sci-fi and rock and roll museum. Yeah. Really cool. Huh? EMP museum. EMP museum. Right. We were just there, and uh, it was great hanging out with Denise. It always is. She's she's a delight. She really is. Uh huh.
Hey, so I know you probably get this question a lot, but before Data got his emotion chip, right? He got that in Generations, was it? Um, what was it like to turn off the emotion, like as a person, to have to tone down the emotions that you were just feeling as a person, you know? It was really easy. Uh, <laughs> no, it really was, because uh, what you saw was, was not necessarily the first take. You know, sometimes in the first take, we'd start laughing. And uh, particularly when it was a really serious scene. The more serious the scene, the more difficulty we had restraining ourselves. So we would just die laughing. Uh, so by the time you actually printed a take, uh, I could pretty well contain myself. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. Plus, I'm not that emotional. I'm sort of uh, ice cold, really. Uh, what's that? No, please. Join me. Do you say? No. Okay. Uh, uh, we have, I guess, one last question because this young lady is afraid of heights. So I'm oh, just going to give her the mic. You're afraid of heights? Oh, yeah, I am too. No, I, I am afraid of heights, oh, honestly. Yeah. I don't even like to stand up if I, if I don't have to. Uh, and I'm best in laying down. I mean, this is really like... No. Okay. We know you've, all, uh, you've done TV, Broadway movies, but where, which one was, do you love? Which one would you do if you... Couldn't do the other. Yeah, you couldn't do the other one. Which one would you continue to do? Why can't I do the others? Uh, <laughs> we're trying to invent this world you're talking about where you can only do one thing. And my heart. My heart is in the Highlands. No, my heart, my heart is in San Francisco. <laughs> it's the loveliness of Paris. No, I won't do that. Uh, I, uh, uh, you know what? Really, I, they're all the same. Really, uh, yeah. Acting is acting. Uh, it's just a matter of size. You know, if you're on stage, you have to speak louder. Um, if you're, if you're on on film, big film, big screen like this, you just have to think. Uh, and, and you get it. Uh, and on television, you know, the screen's a little smaller, so you have to give a little bit more, but not that much more. But it's really a matter of size and frame. Hmm? One, two, three. Uh, uh, at this point in my life, I would say films. I would, I would rather do films than anything else. Because it, it, there's a limit to how long they run. Usually, a, a big film's four months or something, and then you get a, a break. And also because uh, I, uh, you know, I, they have they have better food. Uh, <laughs> the, the craft service is way better. Uh, they put your makeup on for you. At this age, I'd rather somebody do it for me. Go get me things. Uh, stuff like that. I'm spoiled, you know. But I love the theater, and I hope to get back to New York and do a play someday. So we'll see. And if I do, I trust you'll all be there. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody. Great talking to you. Sorry that I was turned that way the whole time, but this is my good side. So thanks, everyone. <laughs>